Look at that. How did you get into training dogs? My entire family were wild animal trainers. So my father and uncle were circus trainers, and then they quit that industry. That's my uncle right there. Uh, they quit that industry, and they moved to Hollywood, and they started training animals for the movies. And I did that for 15 years until eventually, oh, there's me as a kid, bottle feeding myself. My mother's bottle feeding the baby. Uh, <laughs> I learned how to feed myself uh, pretty young. And there's me when I'm older. Wow. So I did this uh, my whole life. So one day I, um, I quit the entire industry because I started training service dogs. And I mainly quit the industry was because I was training animals for entertainment. And one day I got a call to train service dogs for veterans. Mm. And once I trained my first service dog, I rescued it from a shelter. I trained it for a veteran with prosthetics on. He was hit by an IED in Afghanistan. And from that day forth, the day I trained that dog and delivered him, uh, next day, I flew back to California. I quit the industry forever, and I became a full-service dog trainer. That is beautiful. Wow. That is amazing. And you also trained wild animals before? Like, what's the wildest animal you ever trained? Uh, probably my cat. <laughs> really? <laughs> He's pretty wild. Is cats hard, the hardest to train, or can they be trained? Well, you got to understand, cats are still, domestic cats, I mean, they're pretty much wild animals, even though they're yes. small. So, in other words, a dog, if you release it into the wild, it will probably won't survive. But a cat, you release it in the wild, it it'll will. thrive. This is why they bring us home birds and rats on our That's front why doorstep. That's keep happening to me. Yeah. You know, my cat put a whole chipmunk in my suitcase. <laughs> yeah, I am very serious. It, it was a gift. So that's what that means when they do that. Oh, yeah, it's an offering. An offering. Okay. Well, I don't know if that's the kind of offering I would like to have, but I'm glad to know they love me. Okay, can I meet your cat? You can meet Meowculus. Please. Where is he? Where is he? Meowculus, get out oh here. <laughs> All right. Oh. So, this is Meowculus. As you can see, he's always got his little sexy outfit on. Here, you can put him on your lap. Oh, my now, God. He does like, oh, he'll probably perch he on your can, shoulder. Yes, my, okay. I have him in cavity. He does this. Don't be up there, friend. Just don't no, take my No, he likes to hand. perch on shoulders. Yes. Now, if, uh, if you're really into it, he actually likes to suckle on, on chins and lips. Really? Yeah. Okay, you want to get my lip? Uh, you can offer it. If he doesn't do it, tomorrow's a new day. Look at this. <laughs> How do you get him to wear clothes? Now, we just give him a wardrobe and he just changes by himself. No. <laughs> Like, like, okay, so I have my cat McCavity and he's a Sphinx too, but he won't let me put nothing on him and I know a sweater will help him out when it's cold. Tell me about your show, Lucky Dog Reunions. It's a newer version of Lucky Dog. So Lucky Dog for years, I went into shelters and I rescued dogs that were on their final days at the shelters. Okay, this is called Red Listed. Red Listed is when their time is up and they're gonna get euthanized any day now. Mm. So I would go rescue these dogs and I would find them a home and I would train them specifically for a purpose. Sometimes it would be a service dog, other times it would be a therapy dog. Sometimes it would just be an emotional support for somebody who possibly lost their husband, lost their brother, their sibling. So Lucky Dog Reunions, what I'm doing now is all those dogs that I placed over the years, I'm revisiting them. Where are they now? I love that. And so you think about it, a dog's life is anywhere from 10 to 15 years. And some of these dogs, they're 10, 12, 13 years old and I'm talking with the families, that's an entire lifetime of stories they have with this dog. So yeah. I trained the dog as a puppy, a kindergartner, and now I go revisit it as a senior citizen. Mm. Yeah. I love that. Brandon, you're the go-to guy for animal training. You think you could help out some of our audience members? Bring them on down. All right, I think we got the right one. Hey, my name is Shai, I'm from Jersey. <laughs> Jersey. So listen, my dog has no chill. Now, I know I shouldn't give him melatonin, but honey, listen, I gotta give him something. So tell me, what should I give my dog when he is hyper? So I had a client about six months ago, she had the exact same problem. She's like, my dog, high energy, high level intelligence, and the problem was it was causing behavioral issues. She's like, I walk this dog all day, every day. I said, that's your problem. You're walking a dog that wants to run. Mm -hmm. So what I'd highly recommend is agility, okay? Agility, as you can see, the course is set up right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate with the dog. Hopefully he does it, we're live, okay, but. I'm gonna step aside and let you do that. <laughs> All right, where's Oscar? Come on, buddy. This little guy right here, Oscar, hop. Look at Oscar. This little guy right here is a Border Terrier. The owner called me and they said, 
high energy, high level intelligence, a lot of behavioral issues going on. I said, let's teach him agility. So, Oscar, stay. You stayed there. And Oscar, hop, go, give me a weave. Weave, 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 wow. weave, good. Tunnel, go, and then a sit. Did it, Oscar! Oh, so, yes. I always recommend when you have a high level intelligence breed and you have high energy, Teach him agility, it solves a lot of problems and it's much better than an average walk. Okay, and better than melatonin. Thank much you. Much better than that. Give the melatonin to me. Yes. If you like this video, smash that like button and subscribe to the Jennifer Hudson Show YouTube channel. Check your local listings or visit jenniferhudsonshow.com to see when you can watch four episodes in your area. And don't forget to sign up for the newsletter.